Hi, welcome to this Fusion 360 tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about beveling and fillet order. So you can see here in Fusion 360, I have put together a few examples of how different orders that you fillet and bevel your objects can re create different results. It's extremely important and one of the most overlooked things, I think, for people beginning with Fusion 360, poly modeling, or modeling in general. Uh, so here we have three examples of the same operations, but in different orders. It's extremely important to think about the order of operations in order to achieve the desired look that you want. So let's go ahead and let's just break down a few ways that we can get these different results. So here I have two unchanged boxes. What I'm going to do is fill it them differently in order to get a different result. So let's move this over here and let's press F on our keyboard to bring up the fillet tool and just start clicking some edges. So I'm going to click these horizontal edges here and just fill it them a few millimeters and then press enter. So let's just take a look at what the predicted fillet path is. So you can see that this blue line that's illuminated here is going to be showing exactly what's going to be filleted. Now, if I remove this face and this bevel, you'll notice that the fillet becomes changed. It's no longer a continuous line. And so when we fill it, we're going to start to get a much different order. And also a much different result when we start to re-bevel re this fillet. And so this isn't necessarily desirable. There's also different things we can do. For example, let's finish this and I'll just show you what happens, and then we'll do a different fillet. So, you can see that it's going along the length of this blue line. Let's hit undo a few times, and let's fillet these vertical lines first. You'll notice that now, when we press F, the fillet line is going to be going around this object and guiding it in a completely different direction. It's extremely important to be thinking about this when you're designing or just modeling from reference. You need to know exactly what your uh, desired fillet needs to look like. So for example, I created a fillet that goes around this object here. And by using the uh, opposing fillet, let's say I have a vertical one, I fill it the horizontal one in order to guide that edge uh, in the direction that I want and around this shape. So you can see that there's almost an unlimited amount of fillets that you can do. Let's do a few more. And then we'll talk about chamfering. So if we do this type of fillet, which is basically we're filleting two horizontal or vertical edges at the same time and leaving the opposing edge open or unfilleted. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to run into a situation where this point here won't become filleted generally. And so we're going to have a very different type of fillet that's often not necessarily the most pretty as well. So you can see here, we did a fillet operation in this area. And in the end, it created this fillet here, which is going to be more of a point rather than a smooth curve. To change this result, we should choo choose the order that we want to bevel better. So for example, instead I chose that last one that we did first before, I did this first. So now I'm going to go ahead and bevel these and you'll see that I'm getting a much nicer radius that uh, is getting to be larger on the outside and smaller on the inside. This is just one example of how bevel order can completely change your model and your design. It's extremely important when you're designing or modeling to be thinking ahead and planning out your bevels. All right, let's talk a little bit about these two. So this one, uh, if you bevel the vertical edges or the, the uh, horizontal edges first, it doesn't matter. You're going to have a similar result. So that's not a problem with this particular situation. But if we do a chamfer first, you'll notice that we get a much different result, which can be a desirable thing or an undesirable thing. So let's do the first version. If we just go ahead and we fill it these vertical lines first, which I usually suggest anyways, because then it leaves you open for things like 
a variable radius, or sorry, a distance, an angle, uh, fillet or chamfer, or maybe choosing to fillet or chamfer the bottom edge. But in this case, let's just do a single fillet, and you'll see that it's working nice and clean, exactly how it should. Not a problem. Now, if we undo, and let's say we were to do a chamfer operation first. It's going to cause a very, very different result that maybe also won't look natural, possibly not be very easy to manufacture, and also look a little bit ugly unless you choose to use it in your design for better. You'll notice that unlike this bevel over here, where the inner radius is going to be small and the outer radius large, and they all line up on the uh, 90 degree angles, you'll notice that in this situ situation, that's not going to be the case. In fact, we have a completely different uh, height for the bevel here. And then also the radius does not become uh, at a 90 degree angle. Instead, it remains the same distance, similar to what you'd see with your poly modeling in 3ds Max. This often looks ugly and a bit CG, but sometimes it can also be used for better. But in this case, you have the ability to edit the angles afterwards and get a different result than typical. But just be, keep in mind that when you're beveling that this doesn't happen. I've seen this happen so many times where people are doing things without any idea of intent. They don't know exactly which bevel to do first. And so in the end, they add a lot of bevels early on. They add a lot of things that will complicate their life later on. As you bevel, Make sure that you have your major shapes and your major forms blocked out before you start going into detail. It's extremely important. I think it's probably the most overlooked thing and the most beginner mistake. For example, there's so many ways that I can play with this shape here just by changing the bevel order. I can use the bevel order to guide this line around this shape by creating a bevel here. Or, inversely, I can bevel this edge here and this edge here and guide the line in a completely different direction. And so you can see that by playing with different orders of operations, you can get much different results. So I'm going to go ahead and bevel this up top and you'll see that I'm getting this line going all the way through. It's really important, as I've said many times, to keep this in mind. So hopefully this video is helpful. I see this problem a lot, especially with people beveling too early, making mistakes, and also just in general, not understanding which order they need to bevel their shape in order to get the desired result. I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see people in the next video.